So in our topic, Bayesian estimation, we need to use a lot of the ideas we learned in our probability class um, involving Bayes' theorem. So we're just going to give a brief overview along with an example to help you recall some of that information. So recall the conditional probability um, of probability of A given B. This expands out to probability of A and B over probability of B. And I think it, throughout the entire video, we need to remember that we're given information B that helps us find information on probability of A. So we're sort of like standardizing our probabilities and making it more accurate given, based on the information that we're given. So often for base theorem um, questions, we are given probability of B given A, but are told to find probability of A given B. So again, this is our conditional probability um, definition. And so we can expand this out to this using applying, again, conditional probability um, to the top half of this expression. So this may have a lot of um, variables in it, but we're going to go through an example to help clarify some of that information. So the question is, taxi cabs are either blue or green um, in a given city. A taxi got in an accident and the witness said the car was blue. Witnesses are known to be 80% accurate. So if a tax, if 85% of the taxis on the streets were green that day, what is the probability that the taxi involved in the accident was blue? So we're asked to find what is the probability the taxi cab was blue given and we're, the information we're given are, is how accurate witnesses are. So by using that information, we can um, apply Bayes' theorem and our question would turn out, or our expression to solve the question would be, the probability accident cab was blue, given that the witness said it was blue. So that expands out to the probability the accident was blue and the witness said it was blue over the total probability the witness said it was blue. So I'm going to take you over here to this diagram, and basically it splits up into which scenarios the witness would say it was blue. So first of all, we were given that the 85% of the taxi cabs are green, so that leaves 15% of them being blue. So there's two cases, either the witness could be correct or incorrect. So we were told that 80% of the time witnesses are correct, and that leaves 20% of the time witnesses are incorrect. And that's just like using compliments, which I'm sure all of us know. So the total probability of a witness being correct is over here, and that uses 0.8 and 0.2. So the probability that the witness said it was blue and they were correct is 0.8 times 0.15. And then also the probability that witness said it was blue and they were wrong is 0.2 times 0.25. And then also on, on the numerator, we need the probability that the accident car was blue and the witness said it was blue, which is 80% times 0.15. And that equals 0.12 over 0.29, which is 41%. So I just wanted to make a note that only if we just relied on the uh, witnesses' information, they're only accurate 41% accurate of the time. So that being said, that's not really a high chance that just knowing if the witness said it was blue or green, that they would only be correct 41% of the time. So I guess just relying on them is not um, enough information to prove a case. Okay, so we reviewed Bayes' theorem in order to expand on it and show you Bayesian estimation which essentially is only used to minimize risk and obtain the optimal estimate for, for some data. Some definitions you're going to see when you deal with Bayesian estimation is first the prior, which is denoted as pi of theta, and expresses the opinion of the user of your parameter theta before any data is factored in. And it's very subjective, it's an opinion essentially. Then you have the posterior, which is little f of theta given x, and expresses the conditional probability after you take into account all your evidence. And the predictive distribution, which is conditional probability of a new observation called, we're going to call y, given the past data of x. And you can find this by taking the integral with respect to theta of the posterior times the prior. Now what we 
what everyone really wants to know is how to calculate Bayesian estimation and note that this is not the only way to calculate it. This is just a basic overview and can be used when you're solving very simple problems and starting off. First, you want to construct your prior distribution, then find the likelihood, and then modify the prior using your likelihood to get the posterior distribution. Now, this is what it would look like when you're calculating the posterior distribution for the continuous case. It's the prior times the likelihood over the integral with respect to theta of the prior times the likelihood. And the discrete case is the same thing, except you're using a summation instead of an integral. Now what everyone wants to know when they're learning something is, why do I care? Why do I want to know this? And the reason you want to know Bayesian estimation is because at first it can predict any future value you have in a situation if you have enough past data. You can minimize your risk when you're conducting any of your predictions, so you're not having all these other factors in that you're not taking into account and it can help in deciding whether or not you want to move forward in any projects. This next example, we're going to be going over, um, we're going to be calculating a posterior distribution and then using that posterior distribution to calculate an estimate. So um, this is from exam C4, it's sample question number five, and here's the problem. You're given that the annual number of claims has a binomial distribution, given by this function. Uh, you're also given that the prior distribution um, of the parameter q is given by this function right here. The data that you're given is that the policyholder had one claim in each of years one and two. So the question is asking to find the Bayesian estimate of the number of claims for years for year three. The first step in calculating our Bayesian estimate is going to be to find the posterior distribution. You can recall that the posterior distribution is given by the definition of one is given by this, where this is the likelihood, this is the prior, and then over the integral over the space of the two. So we could just plug in and, and, and calculate with brute force, but one vital note to make note of is that the posterior distribution is actually going to be proportional, that's what this symbol means, with the likelihood function multiplied against the prior distribution. When we do that, we calculate everything, and it comes out to 16q5 or whatever. And, um, but we're going to drop the 16 because, remember, we're, we're taking note of its proportion proportionality. The fact that in the denominator we have the same thing, we're going to have that same 16 pulled out of the integral in the denominator, and they're going to cancel out. So we can just leave it as q, q to the fifth times 1 minus q to the second. For the denominator, we're going to take the integral over this space. Whenever you do that, you come out with a numerical constant of 1 over 168. Now plug these two pieces back into this, and you'll end up with the posterior distribution given by the following. But this isn't our final answer. The question asks us to calculate an estimate of the number of claims given the, previous, the data from the previous two years. So in order to do that, we're going to need another piece of information. That's going to be the conditional expectation of the number of claims given the parameter. We're given the, since we're given the, the conditional probability distribution of that as following with it, we're given that it's a binomial distribution with m equal to two and q unknown, we can easily see that the expected value of x given q is equal to two q. To make matters, matters simpler, we're gonna call this random variable y. And again, looking at our definitions from, from our notes, we see that the expected value of, our, of y given x is going to be equal to the integral of the expected value of x given our parameter times our posterior distribution. So that ends up to be this. And after you calculate with enough brute force and you end up getting 4 thirds to be your final answer. One thing to take note of, I mentioned earlier that we use this uh, property right here, which is the fact that the posterior distribution is proportional to the likelihood and times the prior distribution. Um, in this problem, it wouldn't have been so bad to calculate with brute force. You would have had some const uh, you know, just some numerical constants that get pulled out. They pro you probably would have recognized that they get um, canceled out fairly quickly. But in other problems, you'll find, especially with um, continuous distributions, You'll have some gammas and, and single parameter Pareto's, and this can turn out to be a really huge mess. So um, this 
property right here ends up helping you out tremendously in those problems and it can save you lots of time whenever you're working on, whenever you're actually sitting in for the exam. So a lot of the questions that are um, related to our topic in the C4 exam are conditional expectations. So basically it's using some values that we've already collected and predicting the next value. So um, it's basically forecasting and you use a predictive distribution which was explained earlier in this video. So here's some Here's the definition of a conditional expectation, um, and these can be found in our supplemental notes too. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over an example. Um, and this is a question straight out of the, the C4 SOA problems. So you are given that claim amounts are uniformly distributed between zero and theta. The prior density of theta is the following, 500 over theta squared for all values of theta greater than 500. So two claims, um, x1 and x2, which is 400 and 600, are observed. You calculate their posterior distribution as the following. And this is for all thetas greater than 600. So we're told to calculate the Bayesian premium of the third expected value of the third claim given, given claims 1 and 2. So we were told to calculate the Bayesian premium, and again, I just want to go over that we were given the prior distribution of theta, the posterior distribution of our um, the posterior distribution of our claim um, of our observed claims, and then we were given the distribution of theta. So some of the qu exams questions, I just want to like remind you, this is something I learned from a previous class. They give you a lot of information, and sometimes you don't end up using all the information, so don't be like concerned if you're not using some of the information given. But so we're we want to calculate Bayesian premium of the third claim. So the expected value of the third claim given one and two. So again, um, there's several definitions of the expected value, but we're gonna use this particular one, which is the integral of the conditional expectation times the posterior distribution. So um, we were told that the theta is uniformly distributed between zero and theta. And remember that the expected value of a uniform variable is b minus a over 2. So for this particular interval, the expected value is theta over 2. So check mark. And recall that we were also given the posterior distribution of our thetas given our claim amounts, and that was the following three over three times 600 to the third over theta over four and that's for all values between 600 to infinity so using this expression we have our conditional expectation which is zero over theta or zero over two so um it's basically going to be our expectation or our expectation or conditional expectation times our posterior distribution so that again was theta over 2 times the posterior distribution. So we can cancel out some thetas, and so we're um, to this point, and then you just take the antiderivative of this expression, which turns out to be this. <laughs> so it's 3 over 4 times 600 to the third, 0 um, theta over 2. Um, and you solve it using. Um, infinity and 600, and it comes out to equaling 450.